Welcome back to Andy Cooks, the show where me, Andy, professional chef for 20 years, brings you along on my home cooking journey. Because as I keep saying, just because you're a good chef doesn't make you a good home cook. And today we're talking about my whole roast cauliflower cheese. So cauliflower cheese, it's not exactly a new dish, uh, but this is my little riff on it, which is perfect for when you're sharing with friends or family. It's a bit of a centerpiece as a side garnish rather than just normal cauliflower cheese. We're gonna roast this thing whole. Uh, and then cover it in cheese sauce and get a nice char on it. So this dish came about about 10 years ago uh, when I was running a restaurant called Gill's Diner with one of my best mates, Sammy Sweetheart. Uh, and at the time, there was a restaurant in the States that became really famous for this whole roast cauliflower dish. And I've forgotten the name of that restaurant. I never ate there, but I saw it all over social media and it really impressed me. And I was kind of fascinated with this whole theory of roasting whole cauliflowers. Um, and at one point we roasted a whole pumpkin over an open fire and all kinds of crazy stuff. But this kind of dish kind of came about from, from that kind of journey. That original roast cauliflower dish from that restaurant in the States was stuffed with halloumi uh, and it had a, a dressing called zug on top and tahini and puffer granites. It was absolutely delicious. Uh, but this was kind of my version of a whole roast cauliflower cheese. Um, and there's nothing too crazy about this. There's a couple of little techniques, I think, to get it to eat well. Uh, and then what we want is a nice colored, fully cooked cauliflower with a lovely bubbly, cheesy sauce over the top. So let's get stuck in. But before we do, can you guys do me a huge favor? If you like these videos, please chuck me a like, subscribe if you're not, it helps me out heaps. I know the sound was a bit rubbish in the last week's video, but I'm pretty sure it should be good this week, so I apologize for that. But anyway, let's get into this week's video. What you're gonna need? So, unsurprisingly, you're gonna need a cauliflower, and you want a whole cauliflower. You want something that's of a reasonable size. I mean, this will feed six to eight people as a side pretty confidently. Uh, and you want something that's tight. Uh, when I mean tight, you want the florets to be nice and tight together because if they're not, when you roast it, they'll kind of fall apart a bit. Um, and we'll talk about how we're going to prepare this in a second. And then for the cheese sauce, your standard stuff. Flour, butter, good quality milk, and cheese. Now you can use any plethora of cheeses or whatever you want. Um, I'm a big fan of using Red Leicester. I think it makes a really nice kind of nutty flavor. It's the same goes with Manchego. Um, Manchego is a fantastic sheep's milk cheese from Spain and adds a really nice nutty flavor through your cheese sauce. And then just some classic cheddar, just to get a little bit of sharpness through there. But let's get stuck in. I'm gonna attack this cauliflower first. So for the cauliflower, Peel some of these outer leaves off, just so you can get a better line of sight into there. Uh, and what we're trying to do is cut this here as close as we can to the base of the cauliflower. So I'm gonna run my knife in there, as close as possible to the florets. And you should end up with your cauliflower looking like that. Take off any of those extra bottom leaves. And then very carefully, we're gonna make a score right in the middle of the core. Score and a core, there you go. It's a tongue twister. So super carefully, making sure your cauliflower is nice and stable on the bench. Just put your knife, your blade in like that, and you're gonna cross it again. The theory behind why we put that cross there is so it cooks more even. I don't actually know, I haven't ever done any tests to see if that's true or not, but um, we'll do it anyway. So now we're gonna blanch this for about 10 minutes, just to start softening it up before we take it out and start roasting it. So let's chuck it in a pot of boiling water. All right, so in this pot here, we've got like seven, almost eight liters of boiling water. Uh, we're just gonna season that pretty well with sea salt. There's this theory that you should season pasta water and blanching water so it tastes like the sea. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's probably a little bit too much. But you do wanna taste a bit of salt. Hot tip, don't put your finger in boiling water. I've got asbestos hands, I've been cooking for a long time. Anyway, this is boiling. We've got our head of cauliflower. Let's pop it in. So we're just gonna put a lid on that. And we're gonna set the time for eight minutes and we'll see what happens. All right, so I checked it at the eight minute mark. It wasn't quite ready. So this cooked for 12 minutes in total. So we're just gonna pull it out of the water, let it drain off. Once it's drained off, and you've got to remember there's probably gonna be quite a lot of water logged up inside it. So give it a little shake carefully and then get it on an oven tray. This is where we're gonna roast it. So for the first part of roasting, while we're making our cheese sauce, we just wanna get color on it. We wanna kind of set the outside. So all we're gonna do is let this drain off a little bit more. Can be handy just to use a paper towel. Just 
just to make sure it's nice and dry on the outside. And then we're gonna drizzle it with a decent amount of olive oil, some salt and pepper, and we're gonna get it into a 180 degree oven. So that's a bit drier now. Now, this thing will suck up quite a bit of olive oil, so don't be afraid to pour it on there. And once you think it's all covered, that's probably about four tablespoons. You're gonna season it with sea salt. And fresh ground black pepper. And in the oven. So, time to grate the cheese. Uh, and I do suggest you grate your own cheese. It's, um, it's just far nicer than the pre-grated stuff. Uh, that pre-grated stuff's covered in like fillers and all kinds of, I guess, powders to stop it from sticking together. So you're gonna want about 300 grams of grated cheese in total. So what's this? That's 150, that's 100, and we use about 50 of that. So from the 300 grams, 250 grams roughly we'll use in the sauce, and the last 50 grams we'll put over the top uh, to gratinate it. And then once we've grated our cheese, we'll start making our cheese sauce. Uh, and interestingly, in my last video, the Chicken Ella King one, the cheese sauce, someone commented about using cold instead of hot liquid um, when you're doing a roux based sauce. So a roux based sauce is flour and water. I said in that video, use hot stock. Uh, and this person, um, whose name I forgot, I apologize, kind of remembered it off the cusp, um, was saying that, uh, that there's been you know a bit of research done around using cold is actually better. Um, now I haven't done much reading into it because I only read the comment about half an hour ago. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is make this with cold liquid as well and see if I notice a difference. I've always been taught to use a hot liquid and I've never had an issue with my cheese sauce or any sauce going lumpy. Now that doesn't mean I'm right, <laughs> by no means. And I'm always willing to learn new things. So let's have a little experiment now. Anyway, I'll finish grating this cheese and then we'll start making the sauce. All right, in the saucepan, over a medium heat, we have 60 grams of butter. Just gonna let that melt. Once your butter starts foaming, you can add your flour. So you've got 50 grams of flour. Now you wanna cook this out, otherwise you risk having a floury tasting sauce. Once that's bubbling up, we can start adding our milk. Cold milk. <laughs> well, it's not going lumpy, but it's taking a bit of work to work them out. So, jury's out on that one, I think, for me. If anybody has uh, any literature or experiments around this hot milk versus cold milk or hot liquid versus cold liquid into a roux, please share it in the comments below. I'd love to know your opinion on it. But, you know, in the cold milk uh, camp defense, this isn't lumpy, so. All right, we're gonna resist seasoning this just at, any, at this point now. So we wanna season it once we've got a little cheese in it. So we're just gonna bring this to a simmer uh, and then we're gonna start adding our cheese. All right. Time to start adding our cheese. So about a handful at a time. No, we'll start with two. We're just gonna whisk this until it is completely incorporated. Now what we're looking for is a relatively thick cheese sauce for this recipe. Um, and the reason being is that we want it to stick to the, to the cauliflower before we roast it. So it's a fine line though between it being too thick and not thick enough. And the type of cheese you use, while I definitely encourage you to use you know, whatever cheese you've got, um, will change how thick the sauce is. And then we want to keep a bit of that to cover on the top as well. So I'm going to leave that much there for the top. Also control your temperature. You don't want this to really boil now. If it does, you risk the chance of it splitting. So I'll just turn that right down to low. And we've got all that cheese in there. And it's looking pretty good. So at this point we can check the seasoning. Needs a little bit of salt, nothing too crazy. Yeah, that's good. 
So I've turned the heat off, we're just gonna leave it there, we're gonna leave the whisk in it. Every time you walk past it or you go in there, make sure you just give it a little figure of eight, and that just stops it forming a skin. And here's our cauliflower out the oven. Got a little bit of color on the top, that's looking perfect. Now what we're gonna do is transfer the cauliflower onto the dish that we're gonna serve, and then we'll cover it with our cheese sauce and gratinate it to finish it. And the reason we do that is because um, you kind of want the sauce to pull around the edges. So unlike normal cauliflower cheese, where you have a lot of sauce covering, you know, all the florets of cauliflower, once you cut the soap on, you want extra sauce around here to, to be able to mop it up with. We're also gonna let it rest for about five minutes, just so it's not completely steaming hot and the sauce doesn't just completely run off it. But in the meantime, we'll try and move this over. So using a fish slice or something like that, get it off the bottom and over onto your plate. And you want to be careful at this point because it's going to be delicate. All right, so it's about 10 minutes later. Just given this cheese sauce a mix. It's time to start loading it up on top of the roast cauliflower. So you just want to take your time doing this because you want it to be completely covered. And more likely than not, the first layer is just going to completely run off because you're putting hot sauce onto a hot cauliflower. Just take your time. Uh, also worth mentioning, I turn the oven from roast to grill, and that's because that's how we're going to get the good colour on this. So we're just going to keep working the sauce around, and layering it over. All right, finish it with our leftover cheese. Now we're going to put this on a tray and in the oven gonna be way easier to deal with it once it comes out. So in the oven on grill or broil setting until it's nice and golden. There it is. So there it is my whole roast cauliflower cheese. I like to serve it with a knife in it like that. People can cut their own slice. Spoon on some extra cheese sauce. Have a taste. I love cauliflower cheese. So warm, creamy, comforting. I just think it presents really well to a big group of people on a table. I like this better. Kind of a bit more theatrical. Anyway, legends, thanks very much for watching. Chuck me a like if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you're not, and we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.